When it comes to powering your microcontroller project, you want to find a suitable voltage. Too high of a voltage and you might damage some of your components. Too low of a voltage and you might find that things start working in unexpected ways. For very low cost projects, like this silly blinky pin, you can run the microcontroller directly off raw battery power. It can be very cheap as you avoid having to build in a voltage regulator. However, most raw power supplies, like batteries and wall adapters, won't provide an even or accurate voltage. This can potentially hurt your components if you're not careful. Also, the microcontroller might exhibit strange behavior at low voltages. To fix this, we can add a voltage regulator, which will give us a steady, consistent voltage to power our components. If we're using batteries and they get too low, many regulators will simply cut out, preventing any unwanted erratic behavior. While working on this series, I initially started to pick out a voltage regulator right after moving the 328P to a breadboard. I thought that a 1.8 volt regulator would work right out of the box, but I was wrong. I'll show you why 1.8 volts didn't work, and why it's important to test your chosen operating voltage later in this episode. The first thing to do is check the datasheet of all your parts to find their operating voltage ranges. Almost every datasheet will list absolute maximum ratings along with operating ranges. The absolute maximum ratings will tell us what we can subject our part to before we damage it. A bare BME280 will survive anywhere from minus 0.3 to 4.25 volts. This means we should not accidentally plug in our power supply backwards or give it 5 volts. Good to know. Scroll up to look for the operating ratings. It looks like as long as we provide between 1.71 and 3.6 volts, the BME280 should work as expected. Let's take a look at the RFM95 datasheet. The absolute ratings tell us that we can't go over 3.9 volts, and that we shouldn't plug our power supply in backwards. It also needs 1.8 volts to 3.7 volts to work correctly. For the ATmega 328P, we see that we should not go over 6 volts, and that our operating range is limited to 1.8 to 5.5 volts. This speed grades chart is also extremely important. It shows that as we decrease our voltage, we need to decrease the clock speed as well, otherwise the microcontroller might behave erratically. Right now, we've got a 16 MHz crystal connected to our 328P. If we solve for where that is on this graph, we find that we can only go as low as 3.78 volts, which is definitely higher than the voltage we expect from our two AAA batteries. If we want to go lower, we need to reduce the clock speed. Scroll down some to find the active supply current versus frequency chart. This shows us how much current we can expect the 328P to draw when it's running at a given voltage and a given clock frequency. As you can see, as you lower the voltage at a given frequency, the amount of current drawn also goes down. Similarly, if you lower the frequency at a given voltage, the current goes down as well. Since we're trying to save on battery life, it behooves us to try to reduce the current consumption as much as possible. This isn't a gaming computer, we don't need it running as fast as possible. If we can get the microcontroller to run at 1 MHz, that would save us a lot of current over 16 MHz. The good news is that there isn't anything in our program that requires a lot of speed, so 1 MHz should be fine. Scroll up to see that anything in the 1.8 to 2.7 volt range at 1 MHz would use much less than a milliamp. Choosing an operating voltage for your project can be a messy affair. It depends on a lot of factors, such as the operating voltages of your components, battery levels, and what kinds of voltage regulators you have available. Let's quickly talk about the different types of regulators. As I mentioned, you can run your project directly off raw battery voltage, which has its downsides. Here, we can see that your project's supply voltage will equal the battery's voltage as the batteries slowly drain. If we use a linear or buck switching regulator, the supply voltage to the rest of the components must be lower than the input voltage from the batteries. A boost switching regulator allows us to have a voltage greater than the input voltage. It will maintain this steady voltage until, at some point, the batteries can no longer provide enough voltage to even turn on the regulator. 
Finally, we can combine the buck and boost circuitry to make a buck boost regulator, which keeps a steady voltage regardless of whether it's higher or lower than the input voltage. Other types of regulators exist, but these are the most popular types that you will come across. 1.8, 3.3, and 5 volts are traditionally popular voltages for digital systems due to how transistors work. That's a history lesson for another time, but for now, let's look at these voltages compared to our battery's discharge curve. Here is a theoretical discharge curve for our two AAA batteries. Fresh out of the box, they start at 1.5 volts each. So if we put them in series, we get 3 volts. As we use them, they lose their voltage until they're completely discharged. If you remember back in the How to Calculate Battery Life episode, I mentioned that a good product design would allow the batteries to be used down to 0.8 volts per cell, which would give us an ideal cutoff point of 1.6 volts. Let's review the operating voltages for our main components. The BME280 sensor needs 1.71 to 3.6 volts to operate. The RFM95 radio needs 1.8 to 3.7 volts, and the 328P needs 1.8 to 5.5 volts. We could boost our battery voltage to 3.3 volts, but as we saw earlier, we want to keep the voltage as low as possible for the microcontroller. So the lowest we can go is 1.8 volts, and we can use a linear or buck regulator to achieve this. Going with 1.8 volts means we'll lose out on some battery life, but I think we can live with that, especially considering we still get most of the battery's life. To get our 328P to run at 1.8 volts, we're going to have to change the fuse settings, and that means using the Arduino Uno as a programming device again. If you've not done so already, you will want to upload the Arduino ISP sketch to the Uno, as we did in the previous episode. We'll want the spy lines on the UNO connected to the 328P and pin 10 of the UNO connected to the 328P's reset pin. I've added an LED on pin 8 so we can test this setup. Here is my physical implementation of the previous diagram. Go ahead and connect your UNO to your computer. Unfortunately, the basic Arduino program does not include the fuse settings that we need, so we'll need to use a third-party implementation. GitHub user MCU Dude has graciously made these board files for us to use on bare 80 mega parts. If you scroll down, you can see that MCU Dude wants us to install MiniCore through the Arduino Boards Manager. So copy the .json URL. Start the Arduino program. It does not matter which sketch you have open. Go to Files, Preferences. Paste the URL into the Additional Boards Manager field. Click OK, and in Tools, Board, Boards Manager, search for and install MiniCore. Back in Tools Board, select ATmega328 from the MiniCore list. Click Tools again and you should see a lot more options available to you. Let's switch to a 1 MHz internal clock. A 1 MHz external crystal is big and expensive. While it might be more accurate, we don't really need a super accurate clock to read from a sensor and send out data over a SPI radio module. BOD stands for Brownout Detection, which is a special circuit we can enable in the microcontroller that will automatically reset the controller if it detects that the supply voltage has dipped below a threshold, even for a brief moment. If you remember from our datasheet, the 328P might act in unpredictable ways if the supply voltage goes below 1.8 volts, so it's a good idea to have it reset in a predictable way if it does go ahead and set this to 1.8 volts. Leave compiler LTO to its default at disabled, as enabling it has been reported to potentially cause compiler issues. Make sure that the variant is set to 328p slash 328pa, as that's what we're using. Keep the bootloader to yes, UART0, since we will want to upload code via the bootloader. Pick the serial port associated with your UNO. Select Arduino as ISP for the programmer and click Burn Bootloader. When it's done, you should see Done Burning Bootloader. From here on out, we want to use a 3.3 volt USB to serial device or Arduino to program our 328P. Do not use the Uno as it uses 5 volt logic. While you won't hurt the 328P, you could potentially harm the BME280 and RFM95 once we remove the Adafruit breakout boards.
If you're using an FTDI breakout like I am, you'll need to add a 0.1 microfarad capacitor in series between the DTR line and the 328P reset pin. I cover the reasons for this in the previous episode if you're curious. We can also remove the 16 MHz crystal and the 22 picofarad capacitors. In Arduino, open up or rewrite that pin 8 blinky program from the previous episode. Select the serial port for your USB to serial device and click Upload. You should see the LED on your board blinking away. If it's blinking faster or slower than about once per second, check the clock settings and re-upload the bootloader. Notice that I removed the crystal as I mentioned and switched to a 3.3 volt FTDI board. Now that we have our 328P working at a slower speed and ideally down to 1.8 volts, let's throw our BME280 and RFM95 back into the mix. If we look at the Adafruit BME280 breakout schematic, we can see that they've included a voltage regulator and some level shifters. This is great for prototyping at 5 volts, but I question whether it'll work at 1.8 volts. Also, these are extra components we wouldn't need in the final design anyway. I'm going to switch over to the SparkFun BME280 breakout, as it's a little more sparse. It should work in the 1.8 to 3.3 volt range. This happens again with the RFM95. Adafruit added extra components to make it work at 5 volts, but we don't need them. SparkFun doesn't have an RFM95 breakout, so I made my own. Oshpark user Arduino Praxis also has a design available if you want to use that. The design files for my board can be found in the GitHub repository link in the description. I milled it, but you're welcome to get it professionally manufactured. If you're curious about milling boards, I recommend checking out my Creating PCBs for Rapid Prototyping series on this channel. I ordered an RFM 95W 915 MHz module and headers from DigiKey. I cut a 3-inch wire and used that as a simple antenna. Here is how I connected my custom RFM95 and SparkFun BME280 breakout boards to the 328P. Notice that I added two 10K pull-up resistors to the RFM95's reset and chip select lines so that they're held high when not in use. I also removed the LED connected to pin 8 as we won't need it anymore. Let's open the LoRa weather client code that we've been using since the first episode and upload it to our 328P. Once it's uploaded, I'll remove the USB to serial board and give it power from my benchtop power supply. With the power set to 1.8 volts, we start getting these updates every second instead of every 3 seconds. Hmm, that seems odd. Let's probe the power lines to see what's going on. We'll keep an eye on the voltage rail, which should sit at 1.8 volts. Let's put a marker at 1.8 volts. Remember, we set our 328P's brownout detection to 1.8 volts. It looks like as soon as we transmit, enough current is pulled that it causes the power rail to drop below 1.8 volts, which then resets the microcontroller. So, the 328P is resetting, transmitting, and then immediately resetting over and over again. That's not what we want. We need it to delay for at least 3 seconds. If my benchtop power supply can't keep up with the current demands of the radio, I kinda doubt a chip regulator will be able to keep up. So we're going to have to compromise. Let's bump up the operating voltage to 1.9 volts and see if everything still works. With the power supply set to 1.9 volts, it seems that I'm now receiving every 3 seconds, which is good. Back on our scope, we see that the voltage is still dipping when we transmit, but it's staying barely above 1.8 volts. This should work for now. I've added the 1 ohm power resistor in series with the return path so we can measure the voltage drop to calculate current draw. Uh oh, it looks like the 328P is resetting again. By adding in the current sense resistor, we're dropping the voltage rail below 1.8 volts when we go to transmit. Let's bump up the operating voltage just a bit again so we can get a steady reading. We likely won't use 2 volts in the end, but we just need to get an idea of how much current we're drawing at this low of a voltage. Besides, a slightly higher voltage means a more conservative estimate anyway. It looks like we're pulling about 96.9 milliamps when we transmit and 3.6 milliamps when we idle. Once again, it takes about 41 milliseconds to transmit. In the first episode, we measured the current draw of our Arduino Uno prototype. By switching over to a bare 328P on a breadboard, 
lowering the voltage, and getting rid of the extraneous components on the breakout boards, we really lowered the current draw. If you remember, we calculated the average current draw from the UNO project to be around 54.4 milliamps. Keeping the transmit time the same, we can calculate a new average current draw for our system, which we see is around 4.9 milliamps. That's almost a 50 milliamp savings. We've made some great progress, but there's now one thing that concerns me. We initially set the transmit power on the RFM95 to 17 dBm. The most an RFM95 can go is 20 dBm, which is 100 milliwatts. If it is really power, then I would think that as voltage goes down, current usage should go up as power equals voltage times current, at least for resistive circuits. I'm going to have to dig into this a little more, as we need to make sure the radio still has the same range after lowering the operating voltage to 1.9 volts, but that'll be for another episode. Please subscribe if you'd like to keep up, and happy hacking! Thank <laughs> you.